Good day, folks. Hi, everyone. Let me just check whether I'm live both on Facebook and on YouTube. Okay. Today we're going to cover the laws of logic and we're going to correlate it uh, with uh, the world of politics. Okay. So this is going to be an interesting journey, a mental one, I would say, okay? So brace yourselves, okay? Now we have three basic laws of logic, okay? Let's just have a look at them. Okay. Laws of logic, yeah? Oh, I didn't type in the final C, okay. So. Here they are. Uh, sometimes uh, in, in modern era, people talk of uh, four laws of logic. Yeah, the fourth one is important uh, as well. However, I'll just cover the three uh, laws of logic. Okay, in general. Mm, well, maybe I'll just comment on the fourth one. Okay, so let me open also a PowerPoint. Yeah which comes in handy. Okay, so the first law is called the law of identity. Okay, the law of identity uh, says that uh, some uh, thing X is X or A is A. Yes, something is uh, whatever it is. Uh, for instance, if I have a smartphone this smartphone is real, yes, and this is a smartphone. Uh, in case if this seems stupid uh, or unclear to you, I'll just uh, say that there are some philosophies who will tell you that this is false, or maybe uh, in the jargon of some uh, interpretation of quantum physics, for instance, uh, they would say it's just atoms. There is no such thing as smartphone. There is only emptiness because even the space between the atoms is bigger than the atoms themselves. So uh, Christianity will tell you that this whole reality is fake and false. Don't believe it. Yeah. Plato will tell you that your brain is a cave uh, and you are trapped in that cave. So you shouldn't believe your brain. Um, mind and brain at all yeah uh, so there are many different takes on this okay uh, and Ayn Rand is kind of unique in that uh, she uh, embraces rational thinking and she says no whatever you see is true if you see a rock it exists and it is a rock uh, <clears throat> and this is the first law of logic yes so uh, especially in the world of objectivism for instance we a, we use this formula A is A yeah so whatever you have in front of you is exactly what it is so why this is important well let's say I don't believe that this smartphone is real let's say I mess up with my mind yeah and uh, I'm like well this whole thing is an illusion I'm in the matrix uh, someone is playing uh, some evil trick on me yeah can I live a healthy and happy life uh, by doing that? By believing that everything is false, I'm trapped. Will I be a healthy individual if I go that way? Or maybe I'd like to jump from the window and fly just like Neo and Trinity do in the Matrix movies, especially this last one. <laughs> like they fly off as some superheroes. Um, too many people that was a kind of a disappointment and I share that feeling to be frank yeah to be honest so it's important because we cannot I cannot even create a smartphone yes scientists cannot create anything if they don't believe that reality is real why bother with making uh, airplanes um, why create some uh, you know helpful items like you know for shaving your face 
some medical equipment for helping people if everything is false and fake. <clears throat> so this is why this first law of logic matters a great deal, because without it, uh, you are simply unsure. Yeah, And Ayn Rand has a wonderful lecture entitled Philosophy Who Needs It? Yeah. I covered some of it in one of my lessons, one of the previous lessons, so I refer you to this lecture. She has an entire book as well, so when you search it on YouTube, <coughs> you can start with the lecture, and then if you'd like to, you can proceed and read the, the entire audiobook, okay? So A is A, number one, A is A, or reality is real. <coughs> Um, smart phone is a smart phone, okay? So this is our first law of logic, okay? All right. Or else you, 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 you just cannot be sure of uh, reality at all. Like, what is this reality? Is it even real? Hmm? So uh, the second law is called the law of non-contradiction. Sometimes people say the law of contradiction, but that's kind of mm, not really uh, descriptive. It's non-contradiction, -con okay? So the law of non-contradiction. Let's... Oh, not in here. In here. So number two. The law of non-contradiction. Yes. Um... Yeah, if I write law of ident identity, yes, and this is the descriptive part. So, law of non-contradiction, okay, yes, let's also do this so that it's visually more appealing, okay. Mm -hmm. So, law of no contradiction says that A cannot be non A at the same time. Okay. For instance, if we see a cloud outside, well, that cloud cannot be a rock simultaneously. Yes, the object or the phenomenon is. Uh, either a cloud or a rock. Something cannot be uh, something else simultaneously. Yeah. Um, my smartphone um, cannot be a shaving machine. Yes, simultaneously. Of course, my smartphone has many, many functions, many abilities. Uh, it has an alarm. Uh, I can use it uh, as a phone yeah, to call uh, people, I can watch videos, uh, and still it means that all of these functions have been um, programmed, yes? And for each function there is a certain line of codes responsible for that. For instance, my alarm in my smartphone cannot be a phone at the same time, yes? If I want to use the alarm, I need to press the alarm button, yes, to enter that particular part, uh, which is the alarm. So my alarm, even on my smartphone, which has multiple functionalities, my alarm cannot function as my camera, okay? So uh, be aware of this. And already we actually have a huge problem in the world of politics. Because people are like, well, A and non-A can uh, simultaneously coexist. And they are like, well, um, hey, why not? Uh, let's have, uh, let's say we can have Darwin and uh, teach the theory of evolution. And we can have a priest that will teach uh, kids or the students that uh, it's false, yes, or there is some God standing behind all of that, yes. So contradiction 
is political, I'd say. Uh, it's not just political, it's favored in politics. Yes, contradiction is political, political. Moreover, con it's favored in politics. In many uh, like uh, political schools, uh, especially when we talk of multiculturalism or tolerance, yes, it can be mistaken for uh, like pure con contradiction, yes? And your biology teacher can tell you one thing. And if you're, uh, according to me, unfortunate enough to have some compulsory religious classes, like in Russia, like we used to have, uh, what we used to have in Armenia, yes? Your uh, religious uh, churchman will tell you that it's false or there is God who is behind all of that, yeah? So, from the perspective of logic, contradiction is deteriorating. Contradiction is, um, if you introduce contradiction and you do not solve it, yes, in the long range, then it destroys logic, yes, from the perspective of pure logic, yes. If I say that uh, clouds are also mm, cheese, yeah and if uh, I believe it then I may uh, you know create some uh, misconceptions I can try and reach the clouds to eat them and I can get very disappointed yes by discovering that a cloud cannot be a cheese at the same time yeah uh, so there is uh, you know doubt is different when you have doubts especially as a with a scientific or um, logical reasoning yes doubt is fine yes and also it's fine you know doubting everything so we are talking about uh, contradiction not doubt or skepticism yes so being skeptical in some contexts is fine yes even checking whether my smart whether is like the first law is it true or not can i eat my smartphone well, I don't. It doesn't smell like food. Uh, if I try, it doesn't taste good. So I won't do it. Okay. So you can also check the first law of identity. You're welcome. So doubt is fine. We are speaking of um, normalizing. Yes, contradiction. So it's destructive. It's like you know. I have my this uh, operating system. Yes. On my computer I have like Windows if I introduce some uh, little thing which contradicts this whole uh, Windows structure yes my operating system may crash yes sometimes when you download some new programs you know you see some discrepancies you see some problems arise because it's not well integrated yes it's not cooperate cooperative there is some contradiction between your operating system and the program and the program may also be a virus see a virus has its own life so from the perspective of virus the virus is fine yes it lives it operates just like the operating system however it destroys the operating system okay so contradiction is a shutting down uh, our minds and we get people who are very confused who do not know how to think and analyze because on the one hand you have your mind you have your reasoning on the other hand you get you know people say things like don't believe your thoughts believe your feelings your feelings uh, matter yeah um, I tried to listen to a lecture by um, Yuval Noah Harari and when he said that your feelings are much more important uh, than uh, anything else. I stopped there, I couldn't go any further with him. See, because of this uh, phenomenon, because uh, if I don't use my mind, what I get in terms of emotions is a bunch of unknowable and often uncontrollable things like in terms of emotions you know we had in Armenia in the Republic of Armenia we had some 
prosecutors, yes, who were judging people not according to the law, yes. Uh, some family members, for instance, went to see those people, and the family members were like, oh, there is Gagik Jahangidian, for instance, yes, this guy who is in active politics. Uh, I mean, uh, he's a member of a um, uh, judge council, yeah, I don't know how to say that in English. Um, it's high or supreme ju judicial council, something like that. So, Gagik. Johan Girian. Also, there is this Seiran Ohanian, who is now a political uh, a, a member of parliament, uh, opposition uh, from the op one of the opposition uh, po oppositional political parties. He too, like there are people who are saying that those guys, they liked mm, the idea of relying on their feelings and. Um, there, there is a woman who says, I went to see them and uh, plead for my uh, like husband or family member. And these guys were like, I sense that your uh, husband is guilty. Yes. Uh, I don't have enough evidence, but I sense it. Yes, this is what people uh, tell. So I'm not going to release him. I'm going to do everything so that he gets um, the maximum uh, punishment yeah so you know relying on feelings that can suck and that can create lots of problems also political problems pro problems related to justice yeah so this is why mm, contradictions uh, are destructive and you need to learn how to use your mind Yes, how to think. Uh, if you don't want to, you know, end up like Gagik or Seiran or, you know, any human being who cannot make a decision and they are, you know, today I'm happy with this, uh, tomorrow I'm unhappy with the same thing because feelings change, they are not constant. Yes, and in the world of objectivism, feelings are, of course, um, they are markers, they show, they are indicators. Yes. They indicate something, but uh, I'll stop here and let's go to the third law of logic, which is the law of the excluded middle. Okay. Law of the excluded middle. Like if we have two statements and both of um, uh, they, they, they cannot uh, contradict each other, yes? And there, there cannot be uh, a third option. Here's a simple example. All uh, swans are white. And here's the second statement. Yes, let's have statement A and statement B. There are some black swans. Well, if all swans are white, if this statement is true, then the second one is false. Because, uh, or maybe if the second one is true, then the first one is false. And there cannot be, uh, you know, a third option between those two. You see, this is very important. Um, because you cannot have a C which will go like all swan. Okay, capital letter. All swans are white, but there are. But okay, let's. There are some black swans too. Well, this cannot work. Yes. So either statement A is not completely true. It is false. Yes. We need to change it. Or the second one is not true, and we need to modify uh, the second one. Yes, so there is no C which will go this way. And again, in the world of politics, um, you know, politicians <laughs> like to come up with this kind of C st uh, <laughs> statements. No, no, this is true, but this other one is true as well. Especially, uh, you know, if it's elections, if this political guy, uh, you know, he's uh, going for, uh, you know, he's participating in rallies. 
you know, to some voters he will say A is true, to other voters he will say B is true, and to, uh, you know, in some interviews he will be like, well, A is true, but A is true, as B is true as well, yeah? So from the perspective of pure logic, this doesn't work. By the way, this uh, story with the swans is true, like people thought that there were only white swans, yes? And maybe uh, it was in 60s, maybe. Let's see. When were black swans discovered? Maybe 60s. Uh-huh. Oh, no. No, no, no. Okay. By finding black swans in Western Australia. Okay, 17th century. Okay, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yes, 17th century. So for a few centuries, uh, humanity already knows, but before that, people thought that there were only white swans, yes? So they were like, well, all swans are white, and then, you know, this guy discovers that there are some black swans, and there was no television, no uh, mass media, yes? So there were lots of countries and people and scientists who thought that there were only white swans, yes, uh, in the nature, you see? So it's a true statement. So there are some black swans. We already know this. So statement A is false. Yes, we need to remove it. Yes, and we need to modify it. So we can, for instance, we can edit it and say many swans are white or most of swans are white. Yes, for instance. But we cannot say all swans are white, yes, because it's just false. It's just not true, you see. So this is how it works, yes. There is no third option, yes. The middle is excluded, okay. Um, I already said that we have like uh, huge problems in politics because politicians, adore. for instance, we have Serge Sarkisyan, yes, the third president of the Republic of Armenia, Serge Sarkisyan. Uh, he is famous uh, for saying that uh, his politics was the politics of not either or, but the politics of both, yeah, and, and, as he said it. Now I will write it down so that you see it. So here he is the guy. Uh, so he was like, um, it was like my, our politics is not that of either or. Yes, either this or that. Uh, we pursue the politics of uh, both this and that yes so actually mm, he tried to uh, I think I should do this like this way actually he tried to uh, practice this mm, line of thinking and he was like you know Armenia was uh, in good relations with uh, was building a very good relationship with the European Union and until I think 2014 we were heading towards uh, EU and then one day Sir Sarkisyan goes to Russia he talks to Mr. Putin he returns and he says that Armenia is not going to become uh, a member of uh, European Union well there was this uh, special document it's not really about a full membership but uh, there is this Eastern partnership yes so this eastern partnership uh, involved i think six countries yeah so yes we had like ukraine moldova i think belarus yes and uh, the three uh, south caucasus republics armenia georgia azerbaijan so armenia stepped down it was a big surprise uh, for all of us because for um, a couple of years or maybe even a few years Armenia was getting lots of money 
Lots of grants from European Union, Serge was saying only that we were moving towards EU and he was trying to practice this. Well, we will get there but in both places. Like, We'll be good friends with Mr. Putin and we'll be part of this um, Eurasian Union. Yes, a Eurasian Economic Union or whatever. Yeah, Economic Union, yes. And we will be also a member of uh, the European family and uh, European Union. It didn't work. So Putin explained Sir Sarkisian in one night. Yeah, it, we were all very surprised. Uh, he, Serge came back and he was like, no, 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 we're joining this Euros Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, yeah. So uh, Putin said, no, 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 you cannot have uh, both. Yes, you cannot have the uh, middle way or the third way. Yes, you should choose bet either between A or between B. Yeah. So, you know, this is kind of we experienced this uh, law. Yeah, this truth <laughs> on uh, ourselves uh, in terms of our politics. So it didn't work. Okay. So this was the first part of today's lecture. Now I'm moving to the second part. Uh, when we, for instance, when we take the first law the law of logic. Do we even have, uh, you know, a phenomenon called state? State, yeah, state or a state, yeah, it's a, it's a noun. What? State. Well, what, what is it? What a state is? If we think of uh, borders, yes, world map, yeah, if we are like, well, a state has a given, uh, you know, a border, so states are about borders, yeah, so here's the world map of, you know, borders, yes, on the other hand, uh, if we look at planet Earth, do we really see those borders? Mm -hmm. Can you see any borders here? Are these borders maybe man-made? Yeah, where is the border between India and Pakistan, for instance? You know, sometimes there are mountains, uh, rivers and seas, but even claiming that, well, the left side of this river belongs to this group of people and the right side, again, it's man-made. Yes. So uh, in terms of borders, we have no borders. We, we don't we don't we simply don't have them. You see, so uh, borders are kind of man made. Yes, we don't see the difference between Amman, uh, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Israel, etc, etc. It's just one big planet. Yeah. So, well, OK, what else a state can be? buildings maybe like capital let's see okay so uh, is this the state well if we remove all the, all the people from the building what's the difference between the building of a state structure and the building of a museum if we only talk about buildings per se, yes, building themselves, buildings themselves, yeah, per se, it's like on its or on their own, yes, only the building itself, mm? itself. So, well, I think there is not much of a difference between a great museum building and a great like political building if we remove people again there is not much of a difference a building is a building yes and you can you know the capital can be used as a museum one day or a museum building can be used as a state you know as a building of a you know some ministry yeah so 
if if we talk of a state, it's not the it's not really the borders, it's not really the buildings, because both are man-made. Hmm? If we remove the man, <laughs> the politics is gone, the world borders are gone. You see, so these are conceptual. These are created by our own minds. I don't want to say that it's false because it's created by our minds. No, I don't go there. But still, here's an interesting question uh, to think of. When I enter a pyramid, a pyramid, yeah. Uh, let's say I enter the pyramid. If I enter the pyramid, am I uh, in the territory of this ancient Egyptian state? Yes, which created the pyramid, or am I in the territory of uh, the modern uh, Egyptian Ar Arab Republic? I think it's called Egyptian Arab Republic, if I'm not mistaken. Let's say Arab Republic of Egypt. Okay, so Arab Republic of Egypt. So well, most probably I still am in the Arab Republic of Egypt, yes. So in terms of like um, buildings, no, they don't. They don't uh, really work. So you know, if a given building is controlled by a given civilization right now, it is probably theirs, yes. And buildings on their own do not um, speak of, you know, statehood, yeah. Uh, especially, for instance, after this uh, third uh, war between Armenia and Azerbaijan in 2020, 2020 I think, yeah. Uh, for instance, the city of Shushi, Shushi uh, map, and it now belongs to Azerbaijan. Yes, it used to, Armenians used to control it for the past 30 years. Today it is con controlled by Azerbaijan. Yes, it's somewhere over here, I think. So buildings come and go. Um, also, well, in terms of, uh, in terms of, well, I cannot see it really, but okay. When, uh, for instance, there was this uh, riot and people entered the Capitolium, yes, they wanted to uh, make, a, to organize a coup, yes, coup, capital, if we type this one, yes, it was a coup, yeah, so a group of people, well, sometimes coups are organized by the military, but not necessarily, yes, they tried to take away the power uh, but fortunately it didn't work yes the same happened in Armenia uh, Yerevan November 9 let's just type cool probably something will come up yeah there were these r rioters uh, who entered uh, a few buildings the building of the National uh, Assembly, the uh, um, government building, uh, and also the residence of the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan. Fortunately, uh, they weren't able to make the coup. So if you, if, even if you take the buildings, it does not, uh, you know, change the structure of the state, yes? Or even the um, political, mm, the political background. Yeah, let's call it that. In the past, maybe it used to when people, uh, you know, took the uh, TV station, the radio station, the post. Maybe it worked uh, in the past, but maybe there were some other factors. Okay. So uh, my point here is that human beings are the state, yes? So uh, human beings create states on their own, okay? There's no such monolith structure called state, yes? States change their borders, especially when you have very 
militaristic and violent neighbors, like modern Russia, like what Armenia was for Azerbaijan for the past 30 years, yes, if they try to use physical force and, you know, sometimes they succeed. Uh, so it's just men, yeah? So this point relates to the law of logic because a state cannot be a noun on its own if we take away all the human beings from this well let's call it structure or equation here's an example a wooden box now you see a box well uh, suppose I take away all the wood from the box will there be a box without the wood itself see this is an interesting mental experiment uh, because in real life no there won't be any wood any box there there won't be any box left yes or a golden necklace if I uh, I think necklace yes I mm, yes it's with a K so if I remove all the gold from the necklace will I have a necklace no I won't have it yeah it will be gone the shape the, the form will be gone uh, without the essence yes it's a very philosophical uh, topic as well for instance Plato was saying that well there's a better world a pure world of uh, shapes and our world is affected by that world and this is why Christians adored Plato because uh, it hit home with them yes with their concept of heaven a better place etc but practically speaking there won't be any box without the wood so there won't be any state without the human beings see from the perspective of individualism and collectivism this is a cardinal um, concept if we believe in some abstract state we believe in a wooden box which uh, has no wood in it yes if we remove the individuals the politicians yes and uh, everyone who makes those states there won't be any states left so uh, collectivists uh, of all ilks of all kinds yes uh, so I uh, let me use let me write this word collectivists of all ilks well it's another word for using the word kind yeah or kinds of different kinds um, no I think we can use it uh, in a in a plural uh, in plural as well so it's just uh, sometimes it has a bit of a negative connotation to it yeah but you know sometimes it can be used in to to uh, express your uh, stance yes or your feelings if you'd like to uh, collectivist politicians uh, of all kinds and sorts they uh, prefer to make us believe that there is a state without statesmen yes without human beings they want us to believe and often they themselves believe that there is this uh, state thing without any individual yeah you see and it's a problematic concept because we see that well it's not it's not entirely true you see okay so let's move on Um, uh, so when I speak of a state this whole thing refers to a given government as well can there be a government without the individuals who uh, make up this government no the government is made of human beings yes so as an individualist, uh, as an objectivist, I think uh, this is a very important point to realize, yes, that 
those uh, man-made structures strongly depend on men. So when some politicians tell you that the government requires this, the state needs that, your country needs your sacrifice, they are manipulating you. Okay? They want they actually say I want this, yes. For instance, uh, we have this Alan Simonian guy whom I mentioned last time. He's like, well now I'm the president of parliament. Actually he's now appointed the president of the country because the previous uh, president resigned. So uh, yeah. He was like, well I need a very expensive and he used the term representative car because we are going to have lots of guests uh, this year so I don't want to, you know, I want to have a representative car for my important international guests of course he didn't say I want it, he said well the president of the parliament needs to be representative yes, so that the international guests will be impressed but they will see all the luxury, blah 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 mm -hmm. so uh, Actually, when we speak of the Alain Simonian, again, if, so there's this uh, title, yes, uh, head of, uh, like, president of parliament. Oh, well, I didn't want to, actually. So if I remove Alain Simonian, where will there be this president of parliament? without the individual it won't be and actually the individual makes of it whatever he or she wants so for instance we had uh, the city mayor of Yerevan um, Haik Marutian yeah he was a very decent guy he's a famous actor he you know he's very loved he he's very popular Mm, he's the one who actually uh, changed the uh, infrastructure of public transportation for three decades. We only heard we have no money, uh, there is not enough funds, blah blah blah. So he's the one who introduced some new buses, yeah, and mini buses. So for instance, he he knows how to drive. He has his personal car. He didn't keep a chauffeur. He didn't take the government car, he didn't take the money for the gasoline, for the oil, yes. He was just driving his personal car, yeah. And, um, well, Alain Simonian, he needs a personal driver, yes. He cannot uh, drive on his own, yeah. So, uh, you know, this is uh, the problem. The problem is that the individual brings with him whatever he or she wants yes whatever he desires there's no such thing as the mayor of Yerevan or as the president of parliament per se it's the individual who makes something of it you see uh, okay so I talked uh, I, I covered yes my theory of Nounizing uh, verbs. Yes, again, again, president. So to preside. Yes, it's 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 a it's a verb to preside. It's an action to do something. Yes. So president. This ent by the end of the word shows that someone is doing that job. Yes, someone is presiding. Yes. Actually, the, the, the root of the word preside, well, we have this sidet in Russian, to sit. Yeah, so the root is to sit, um, if we go very deep. So someone who sits, yes, on this uh, particular chair, yes. And we have the word chairman. So chairman is very uh, nounized as well, chairman. So for some reason, and uh, Vatican is the holy seat, yeah, we have some obsessions, some s crazy obsession with, uh, you know, the chairs and sitting, yeah. Uh, so with this furniture, yeah, uh, this one item of furniture, the chair, it's uh, myth mystified, yeah, mythological, okay. 
uh, again we I think of you know those pharaohs that uh, sit on their chairs yeah uh, okay so okay well um, if for instance we had Haik Marutian as the president of parliament yes this decent guy who didn't uh, just a sec I actually have a lesson uh, okay I'll just tell her that I'm still doing the live okay so Haik Marutian uh, would be a very different president of parliament yeah he wouldn't require his own chauffeur, he wouldn't require extra money for the oil, etc, etc. So, you know, he, he's a very interesting guy with his principles. Um, so, there, you know, if someone wants an expensive car, yes? So, his car cost $200,000 and this is one of those, uh, you know, scandalous stories. Um, in a post-war Armenia, yeah, with lots of problems, you know, the guy wants to buy himself a car that costs two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So, uh, Haik Marutian, for instance, most probably wouldn't do that. So when, when, yeah. So this is the good guy, Haik. <laughs> well, uh, I wouldn't call Alain the bad guy, but he's more prone to corruption, I would say. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind him, you know, being a successful businessman, etc. But as a government guy, see, he needs the car and he tries to justify it by saying that, well, it's not Alain Simonian who needs this car. It's the president of parliament who needs this car. So he's now nizing uh, his position, yes, the president, instead of being, uh, you know, doing uh, like okay let me put it this way doing the presiding it's not this old Alain Simonian who's doing the presiding but it's a new Alain yes who is the president yes old Alain doing the presiding no it's new Alain the president Yes, he is uh, creating a new identity for himself and it's dangerous and it's corrupting. Yeah, this is my theory of nounizing. When you turn the verb into uh, a noun, yeah. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what else have I got here. Okay, so the last point will be so let me put it maybe as a question should we uh, equalize or should we um, put an equal equation I mean this one yes sign something equals something else yes between the human, the individual, and his post or position. Uh, in other words, is it true that Alain equals president? of parliament or maybe if we go back to our laws of logic mm -hmm. so which law can this uh, statement actually violate Allen equals non Allen yeah so Allen is or equals non Allen. So which which rule of logic, which law of logic does this contradict? So we have the law of identity, the law of non-contradiction, 
and the law of the excluded middle. Yeah? I think it's kind of clear yeah, that the second law is being violated. The law of non-contradiction is being violated. So Alain is Alain, yes? When he is making a new identity, well, I am the president now. He is violating this second law of logic. And politicians and people who uh, enjoy power, yes, they are very prone to doing this. And this is one of the reasons uh, that, you know, people get corrupted. Yeah? So there is this interesting statement, power cor corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely. <laughs> I love this. So if you uh, do not work on your mind, yes, if you do not understand these laws of logic, if you do not go through this process of self-exploration, yeah, then you put yourself in a very dangerous position. It can be politics, it can be business, it can be relationships, you know, abusive relationships when uh, one partner allows uh, themselves to be very violent uh, with the other partner. Yes, normally he doesn't allow this violence, uh, you know, let's say domestic violence. He doesn't allow himself, you know, lots of people. Uh, you know, as colleagues, as citizens, they are very, like, let's call them normal or decent. Hmm? But once they have a loved one, they allow themselves, you know, uh, to be very rude. Uh, and this is because, again, they create a new identity. Instead of, it's the old guy who has a loved one. They are like, I am the new partner. I am this new uh, role. So he identifies the person, they identify themselves with their new role. Yes. I am my new role. Yes. So again, if I talk uh, in terms of the laws of the logic, uh, I am also non I. You see? So uh, it's like saying A is non A at the same time. You see, it, this violates the first law of logic, yes? The law of identity, yes? Simultaneously, I am this and I am something else. Well, it doesn't work. You can be the same thing and you can have multiple functions, multiple roles, yes? But. You know, this is a very interesting idea to consider, yes, to think over, uh, both in terms of like politics and in terms of personal development. This is a political uh, issue. This is a logical issue. This is a philosophical one. And this is a, a psychological one as well. OK, so this is it for uh, that's it uh, for now. OK, um, yeah, I think I'm done. Okay, so see you next time. Uh, we will cover the size and the functions of uh, governments, especially from the perspective of objectivism, yes, which is very individualistic. Mm -hmm. And also um, the areas of governance and regulations, like should politics uh, control and regulate everything or maybe there are some limits yeah so that's it okay let me check uh, to see if we have some comments right now or not last time we had some comments and I didn't respond to them okay so give me a sec okay I think the top chat on YouTube is empty let me also visit Facebook real quick on my device yeah, I'm very sorry. Uh, last time there was some comment and I didn't respond to that. I feel a bit guilty. Okay, okay, no, no. Nothing on YouTube. Only some spam. And I think Facebook is 
Lynn as well. Okay, thank you for the likes, guys. If you have questions, if you have suggestions, you are free to think over those questions, okay? So um, this is kind of my idea to correlate, you know, the laws of logic and uh, politics. Uh, so I think it's a very interesting and useful um, experiment, yes, especially to avoid this possibility of, or to maybe uh, make it less plausible, less possible, yeah, this um, possibility of corrupting yourself, yes, getting corrupt, you see, okay, so thank you and see you next time, guys, okay, I'm ending the streams, okay.